Praise God. Praise God this morning, family. Our scripture text, our pastor chose this day. We thank God for Pastor Charlotte Caldwell and her family. We don't take it lightly that God has given us a powerful leader who studies to show herself approved. So when she comes before us, she rightly divides the word of God. Amen. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter six, verses 17 through 20. And it reads as thus, the beginning of wisdom is the most sincere desire for instruction and concern for instruction is love of her and love of her is in the keeping of her laws. And given heed to her laws is assurance of immortality. And immortality brings one near to God. So the desire for wisdom, y'all, leads us to a kingdom. This is the word of God for the people of God. Bless be unto God. Everyone knows something about the scriptures. They know something about Jesus. They know something about the Jewish people. They know something about the Arab people. They know something about different denominations and actually specialize in nothing. So the desire for instruction. I remember uh, Dr. Maisha Handy, who is much younger than I am. She had her PhD very early on. And people scoffed at her, but she did the hard work. Reverend Brown will tell you what it is to go through the burning sands of study in seminary. You do the hard work. But then people don't want to be instructed. They want to hear what makes them feel good and feel right and shout a little bit and jump. This text is not about that. You must have a sincere desire for instruction and concern for instruction. And I know many times I unpack things in ways that just open you guys up to going, what is she saying? Even Wednesday, when the instruction was in the Hebrew, the Lord is my shepherd, the word shepherd was not there. Either you decide this day if you want truth or you prefer the lie that even the lie has been perfumed up because the lie isn't even getting told correctly these days. Even the lie is getting twisted. And it doesn't mean, as I said before, that you don't continue to say the Lord is my shepherd. I just showed you what the word really said. Concern for instruction is love of her. Wisdom. Hakma is a feminine word. The love of wisdom. Solomon knew that it wasn't enough to have a knowledge and study. You had to have wisdom. We have a lot of smart, unwise people today. We can see the smart, very bright, elite people that came from top schools are bombing entire countries killing people. And then some of the elite people in education that push back, then some people remove funding when they decide to speak truth. See, this fellowship with wisdom, it might get you in a little trouble. Yeshua knew all about the fellowship with wisdom. There's so many reasons Yeshua would pull himself away from the disciples and go pray and sit and meditate. Because sometimes if you're just sitting with a sea of people with emotions that people who only want instructions from something that meets their needs, you can't get that centering without stealing yourself and putting yourself alone with your God. And it is a scary thing when God says you have wisdom, but you don't have understanding, or God says you have understanding with no wisdom. Wisdom is important. Because before you get 
through wisdom and understanding, you want to be able to say, God, add to that knowledge. God is not adding knowledge because we don't want to walk in wisdom and understanding. We must know her. And yes, Jesus wanted me to be very intentional about putting everything feminine back in this sermon right before the communion. Jesus didn't run from women. Jesus healed them. Jesus delivered them. And women were the first ones to tell the good news. Look at the wisdom of God. Do not allow anyone to talk you out of who you are in your Messiah. You are powerful. Cozy up with wisdom. Wisdom is the one that will make you know that sometimes telling people to cut the baby in half will show you who the real thief is. Not easy. Cut the baby in half. What if, just what if they said, let's cut Israel in half and give half to Palestine and half to Israel? We might see who the real culprit is. Because wisdom came to me and started showing me that this is really about trade routes and about canals. Egypt has this wonderful canal that they make billions on every year. But well, they don't want to pay Egypt. So they can get those people out of Gaza. They can do their own canal. Next slide, Kenny. Wisdom. I had to go research and study that when someone was bringing it up. I wanted to give you a different view of this text so that you know wisdom tells me always translators make decisions. So now let's read it from another translator's perspective. For well, the first step toward discipline is a very earnest desire for her wisdom. Discipline. Instruction is discipline. If you can submit yourself to instruction, that's a, a posture of discipline. Sometimes not an easy one, but it means that you must focus and pay attention. Don't fly out of the room. Discipline, you must discipline yourself. Something that is probably profanity here in America. You must discipline yourself. Then care for discipline is love of her. That you care that you discipline yourself. Think about it, usually we're having to discipline someone else. This is saying do it to yourself. Put yourself in check. Don't you love this fellowship with wisdom? She's telling you, put yourself in check. She's telling you, you have to love discipline and instruction. And it's interesting that this is coming from Solomon because along the way, Solomon lost every last bit of that. made offerings to different gods and married foreigners. And God has specifically said, do not do that. So the man is telling us from experience that the first step toward discipline is a very earnest desire for her. So maybe along the way, Solomon didn't desire her as we move to the next slide. And I gave you a, a picture of the world sitting between the sun and the moon specifically to give you a view sometimes that that's what's happening to us. We're sitting between stuff. That's just stuff that has no instruction, no discipline. We're just sitting between stuff. Lady wisdom, wisdom, chakma. We've gone through this word millions of times since I've been here, Beth Salem. Wisdom. Feminine energy. Don't change it because if a man exhibits wisdom, he's still dealing with the feminine energy of God's wisdom. We should have it, just have it. As they say, I got it. Women, it's feminine energy. Next slide, Kenny. Fellowship with wisdom is literally putting a demand on who you are. 
There are seven pillars of wisdom. It's development. If you have been in the same place, your language hasn't changed, how you be in space and time hasn't changed, you're not developing. You're just a big old lump of salvation sitting somewhere worthless. And we have enough of that. You slide to your church or you slide to wherever you want to go. Just tell me what I already know. No development. Everyone, you should go back to the first time you encountered God and be able to sit down and map out your own spiritual development. Everyone should be able to do that. Wisdom is discipline. Some of us, the main discipline we don't have these days is over our mouth and our minds. Everything is to grab your attention, train your brain on what you want to buy, what you want to eat. Everything is like that. It's discipline. It means sometimes you have to shut the phone off, shut the TV off. I can't bear to watch the news. And then I have to be honest. Wisdom was like, you need to be honest about why you feel salty sometimes about what you see on the news. Because I'm always searching. Nobody is yet to say anything about all the people they're stealing from the Congo. Where, by the way, we wouldn't have our phones and computer without it. The Congo. See, it's money to be made in the Congo. That means Black people are going to die. I viewed an Arab woman lifting up a cute little black girl saying that she was for sale. The biggest enslavers right now are Arab people. They're stealing our people from the Congo. When black people wake up, when black people wake up to the discipline of wisdom and understanding the world is gonna shudder. But that's why they need you to stay quiet. They need you not to love discipline and instruction. They need you to stay right where you are. I'm an African-American. It is discernment. It means get out. Discernment will take you outside of yourself. Because sometimes it's the self that keeps you from seeing what's outside of yourself. What We have to have this fellowship. Our ancestors had it. We have been walking around stupefied in this country because of the news, because of advertisements from corporations, stupefied. This morning, I invite you to fellowship with wisdom. Wisdom is dignity. It is time for people around the world to have their dignity. The Jewish people deserve their dignity. The Palestinians as well. The African descended people as well. The Arab people, the indigenous people. Everyone deserves their dignity. And until we deal with the monster that's in the room, colonization, I said it. Until we deal with the monster that has invaded this world, colonization, we're going to see similar things. It's as if they're holding their hand. The whole world is crying that Israel is creating such chaos and committing such crimes. But America's just holding back and you're going to get on there and they're going to give you feel good stories and you're going to, black people don't fall, fall for it. It's the same thing they've done to you over and over and over again. Which is why I was so disappointed and I shared with Linda this morning at the Presbytery meeting. They did a wonderful video about the churches in the Presbytery. Why were we the only church with someone up there talking? Because at first I thought, are they just gonna show that there's only white people in the Presbytery? None, none of the African American Presbyterian churches participated. I'm thankful that Linda did. She was the only African-American face on the whole video. Have some dignity. Be willing to stand up and show up. 
You don't always have to show out, but I do need you to start showing up. Wisdom is discretion. Not the type of discretion that sometimes we're taught. Wisdom sometimes means you just know. You show up and you know. You know when somebody's lying, you don't have to tell them they're lying. They already know they're lying. Why do you have to tell them? It's a wisdom, discretion. It's kind of like when we said last week, what did they really die for? The discretion is for them, they keep saying they died for you to vote. They died. No, they just died for you to be free. See, when you have fellowship with wisdom, got to clean up the misconception. Just like that. Wisdom is the depth of understanding. If you don't want to know the full breadth of the word, I might not be your pastor. Because I'm not going to lie on the word. I'm going to tell you what it says from the perspective that it came from. We have put roses and everything else on a text that has really been trying to deliver us and take us somewhere. But we have weak-minded preachers and teachers that are afraid of you, the people. Well, people will leave. Let them leave. People don't. You need to know truth. We have enough Christians walking around that will turn their face and back to suffering, injustice, and go home and go to sleep, bless the Lord. We don't need it anymore. Keep it. The whole world is standing up. We, how do we work this out now? Because Christianity is so joined in with Judaism and things like that. What do we do to rebuke the Jewish people? easy this is wrong you don't walk around killing babies and children because you won't land we say it to america you shouldn't have gone around killing the indigenous people because you wanted their land you should have learned to live in harmony and they would have taught you how to be in harmony with the land colonizers and this world would not be in the condition that it is in wisdom will make you uncomfortable do you feel it Wisdom is devotion to God. We miss it here too. We will be devoted to our denomination, devoted to our job, devoted sometimes to different causes and things like that. Just be devoted to God. I'm not telling you not to do things, but your devotion to God is a type of act of worship. And sometimes I've reminded you, what you pay attention to is what you worship. God said, wisdom is paying attention to me. Development, discipline, discernment, dignity, discretion of understanding, devotion to God. Fellowship with wisdom. Wisdom is one of the, uh, the spiritual aspects of all of who God is that is so lacking from our, our White House to the Congress to churches. We must get this God wisdom. Not only that, we must fellowship with it. That means hang out with wisdom. Sit down and have a little talk. And then you might develop, get some discipline, discernment, Dignity, because what we think of as dignity, it's not, some people's dignity is how high their hat is in church. And if theirs have beads on it and the other one doesn't, oh, we can go into all different denominations and dignity and all that stuff becomes something different. If you're the head usher, you're the one with the glove, you can sit, take somebody out of a seat and put somebody else in a seat. That's not dignity. That's just being mean. Depth of understanding. The depth of the understanding we must get that I don't think we have tried to get since the pandemic is that people don't want to be like us. If you're lacking development, discipline, discernment, dignity, discretion, depth of understanding, and devotion to God, people don't want to be like you. 
we once again voted about a church leaving the denomination. What is wrong with us? I will tell you this, as people flee with the crowd, I'm like my memo, I'm not going with the crowd. It's not that you're going the wrong way. And that's why I don't like people leaving. It's not that PCUSA is going the wrong way. She's going the right way. You need to withhold and hold fast. Let, let the people fall off that like to be in the popular group and let them go. Broad is the path to destruction. Stay on this narrow path. I pray Flint River, Greater Atlanta, PCUSA, stay on the narrow path. That means you're willing to fight. The narrow path means you may need to have your machetes in your hand to cut the weeds in front of you so you can keep your path going. Fellowship with wisdom. It's a part of what we have in communion as well. As we prepare for communion, 